Hello, my name is Paul Iroye, and today I'll be talking to you about how to prepare yourself for student leadership. I'll be giving you six points that will help you in your quest to be a leader amongst your peers. Number one, you need to be on a comfortable academic grade. Because of the demands on leadership and on leaders, it will not be good enough if your academic grade is not good and you want to be a student leader. So you need to first of all work on that. Don't forget the primary purpose for which we're in school is because of academics. Every other thing would come as secondary. So always bear that in mind if you want to be a student leader, your academics come first and then every other thing. If you are good in academics, it will be easier for you and for others to consider you for a leadership position amongst your peers. My second point is self-confidence. You need self-confidence. To be a leader of people, you need to have confidence in yourself. What can you do? What can you give? What do you bring on the table that is different from what others have to offer? Your self-confidence is going to help you when you're making your manifesto. It's going to help you to present your vision to the people that will vote for you, appoint you, or elect you. And when your teachers or other members of staff, when they see that self-confidence in your day-to-day -day life, it's easier for them to point you out, to single you out and say, this one is a leader amongst his classmates. The top point I'm going to be talking about is role modeling. You have to be the type of a person that other students can see as a role model, somebody they can emulate, somebody they can see as a good example for them to follow. Also, the teachers need to see you as a good example for other students to follow because leadership is about having people to follow you. Somebody said, there is no great leader when you have no followers. So it's really important. You need people to see you as a role model for good thing, for, for excellence, academic excellence, attitude, behavior, and everything. And then it's easier for them to consider you for leadership position. My number four point is you must be a team player. No one likes to associate with a divisive person, with someone that causes trouble. Everyone likes to associate with somebody that likes to work together in a team. Somebody that complements a team and not someone that confuses a team. Someone that makes a team perform better and not someone that draws back a team. My number five point is going to be respect for all staff. Adults love it when young people respect them. So you have to show them that respect. Respect for other students. Respect for school properties. Those are things that will single you out amongst your equal, that you are somebody worthy to be considered for leadership among students. And my last point is good manners. You must have good manners. You are going to be an ambassador of this school. So you must develop that manner in yourself. You will have opportunities as a student leader to represent your school in different places. And this can take you far away in life. So good manners, you must imbibe from the word go. So I'll take you through the six points again. Number one, you must be on a comfortable academic grade. Number two, you must have very good self-confidence. Number three, you must be a role model to other students. You must be seen as one. Number four, you must be a great team player. Number five, you must have respect for all staff. And number six, you must exhibit good manners at all times. Thank you once again for listening to me today. Don't forget to drop your questions in the comment section and I will respond to them in due time. My name once again is Paul Iroye. Make sure you're good.